Hey, hello. I don't know, I've got a little circle going round and round, so I don't really know if I'm live. Darn it, there we go. Now it says I'm live. I was saying the little circle's going round and round. I don't know if I'm live. Hello, let's see who jumps on here. I was sitting here, I don't know if you saw the part, I was putting my hair up, whatever, and I'm sitting here going, okay, well, I need to figure out what I'm gonna talk about first, and that's what I used to do before I ever <laughs> would make a live video. And if you know me, I kind of go all over the place, but um, I hope it's a little entertaining. I used to sit and just try and figure out everything I'm gonna say before I do a video, and I'd never do a video. So just do a video, just start. If you wanna get out there and talk about something, here's what I'm here to talk about. It's almost the fourth. You can see, I've got my little, my little props going here um, with my flag. This is actually a scarf from Old Navy that I got years ago, love it. Um, and I've got my, my American flag shirt on, I've got some other stuff. And I just want to share a couple things. As everybody is getting ready to jump into the weekend with the 4th of July, of course, it's a little bit different this year um, than it was last year with everything that's going on. And that's not what this video is going to be about. I just, I want everybody to love each other and be kind. And we know that, you know, we're all going to be okay. We're, we're going to get through all of this. Um, but it's the 4th of July and I wanted to talk about, I do want to say, I want to talk about, you know, this is about our freedom. I'm going to read a quote here and I just want to encourage everybody to just really remember what this weekend is about. I know a lot of people are going to be, you know, I live in a lake community um, in North Carolina, Lake Norman. And so I know a lot of people are going to be out on their boats and at parties and barbecues and that's great. And, and you know, but we, we often tend to forget about when it's the holidays, when it's Christmas or Easter, we tend to forget about like really what it's about. And more than ever right now, we need to, you know, come together. And if you know me, or if you've seen any of my posts, I say, love is the answer. Um, love is the answer to, to everything, I like to say, because that's what Jesus tells us in the Bible. Um, and if I lost you at that, I love you. I can't hide my faith. I talk about it. Um, I want to read a quote here from Ronald Reagan, who I, I love Ronald Reagan. Um, freedom. He's talking about freedom. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in their bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like to, what it was once, excuse me, what it was once like in the United States where men were free. So I love that. Ronald Reagan. You can go look it up, type in Ronald Reagan freedom. This will come up. Here's something else I want to share. If you're still with me here. I don't know. I can't see who's on here. I think I changed my settings. This is a book. I know that's going to be backwards to you, but this is a book called Roots and Wings. And I was gifted this by my sweet Sarah. I call her one of my very best friends in the world, Sarah Heflin. And this is a book, um, her father, Tom Heflin. This is Roots and Wings, The Art of Tom Heflin. He's an artist in Rockford, Illinois. And I always have the best intentions of like going through this whole book, right? And reading all the different things. And I just, I do here and there, but something sparked me. And I just thought, I just want to see what he's got in here about 4th of July or about, I don't know, I just started thumbing through it. Well, of course, when I do things like that, whether it's in the Bible or I pray about something or I go, okay, show me what this is supposed to be. So I come to this page. Um, if you're into art, if, if you're not, if you're watching this live now or later um, and you want to know more about Tom Heflin, I'll put a link to him. His art is just so amazing. So I'm going to tell you about this and here, here's why. Because this is something, this photo... And Tom, I'll tag you in this, hopefully I can afterwards. Um, this reminds me of freedom. Um, freedom and the country that we live in. I've got two pictures here that I want to share. Um, the first one, and I'm going to tell you about it, and it's called, hold on here, hang with me. It's called Chores. And the other, it's Harold's Hands. And then we've got Chores. And then we've got general merchandise, this one here. Oh, 
this one here, right? Ah, it's backwards in the video right there, okay? And, you know, it's just like looking back when times were simpler. And if you, by the way, this is not going to be one of those two-minute videos. I'm going to keep talking. So if you want to listen, listen. If you don't, we're already at five minutes. Um, this photo here, Harold's hands, okay? I just love this. And I'm going to read it. Because I think some people out there, if you're anything like me, you you might appreciate this. He wrote about this. Every now and then, Emmer and Harold stopped by the farm to mend a fence, tend their garden, or work at other chores. If a job didn't require Harold's help, he sometimes came into the house and watched me paint. So he's talking about himself. Pulling up a chair, he'd sit in a corner and talk, although not necessarily to me. He'd just ramble on about things that happened maybe 30 or 40 years in the past. In the 20 years that I knew him, not once did he ask me a question or look me in the eye. Eventually, I grew accustomed to his presence and his continuous stream of talk. When he stopped rambling, he fell asleep, his chin resting on his chest. I never saw him without his hat. Oh, and I was going to put, I was saying I had props. I was going to put one of my props on, okay? Um, never saw him without his hat, and I never saw him dressed in anything other than his bib over, coveralls. When Harold worked, I get to look at the picture, so I'm going to let you guys look at this. When Harold worked, he had to be supervised by Emmert, who insisted that he stop and rest from time to time. If left alone, he would continue working until he dropped. He had no interest in television or reading. His only diversion that I was ever aware of was his radio. I feel like when I was a teacher and I was reading books to my class. I kind of like it. So the only, the only thing that uh, he was ever, it says the only diversion I was ever aware of was his radio. After supper with Emmert, and Florence, he would retire to his room, close the door, and listen to his favorite program. By 8 o'clock, he was asleep. On one occasion, and I love this. I mean, I turned to this page, okay? Like, just turn to it. On one occasion, he handed me a note that had been folded over and over until it was about two inches square. When I finished unfolding it, I read the heavy-handed but very legible lettering. Don't forget to vote. Oh, this looks like it's slowing down. I hope it's okay. I hope we have a good connection. Brian, do we have a connection still? It's weird on my end. Okay, I'm going to keep going and not get distracted. Um, when I am finished unfolding it, I read the heavy-handed but very legible lettering, don't forget to vote November 25th. And then Tom's got in parentheses, evidently a message he had heard on his little radio. A more innocent, harmless, hardworking man was never born. That's what reminds me of the United States and freedom and we're hardworking and that's how I you know that's how I was raised and looking at this I just I love this it draws me in that's what art does right fortunately for Harold death came quickly there was no suffering on July 18th 1986 I was one of the pallbearers who helped carry him to his final resting place it was my birthday Emmert died five years later the twin brothers are buried at the New Salem Church Cemetery a couple of miles from Emmert's farm. Harold's Hands, 1986, acrylic on canvas, 11 by 14. It's a collection, Jim and B, right? Beers. I don't even know if you can get this anymore. I have no idea if you guys have questions about that. Brian, that means the world. A friend of mine, I don't know if y'all can see the comments right now or not. I haven't done a Facebook Live in a while, and I know that some things have changed. Um, he said, you're the hardest worker I know. I, you know, and, and that's going to lead me in to talking about when it doesn't feel like work. It's so, um, fun isn't always the word fun. It's fulfilling and it's challenging and it's what gets me up in the morning and to provide for my son and, you know, to help my clients, to help my friends who become clients. Hold on, I just wanted to show you all my gear I have for 4th of July. Uh, to provide, you know, to, to be there, sorry, to have my friends become clients and my clients become friends. And of course, obviously, it's not always about doing a real estate sale, but it is what I, it's what I do for a living. It's how I pay the bills. It's how I support my son. Um, and I love when work doesn't feel like work. And sometimes it's the grind. But, you know, there's such a thing, there's something on my hat, you know, work smarter, not harder. Sometimes I can go down these little rabbit holes and I could sit on here and keep talking um, about how important my, my, 
my clients are to me and my friends are to me. And when I get a call, like this has happened three, three times in the past five days. Sorry, there's something on my hat that I'm seeing out of the corner of my eye. So guess what? I'm going to just switch my hat. People are going to be like, what is her video about? Is it about hats or what? See my sunglasses? These are 4th of July. But I've had these um, referrals over the last five days. Uh, people who remembered me from an open house um, that didn't even give me their information. They kept mine for, uh, there's my dog, hold on, for over, come here baby, for over uh, almost a year. And then a friend who said, you know, reach out to my friend Molly Laporta. She's a she's a great broker. She'll help you out. And and it's it's just all about when people remember you and they want to work with you because they know that somebody else has had a good experience with you. That's what it's about. I love to tell people, and Brian, if you're still on here, you know that. I, I want to be the person. I, I mean, I am the person. People say, well, what, where should I go to get my teeth cleaned? Uh, Dr. Tampoya. You know, where, where should I go for an orthodontist? You know, Lineberger. I mean, I could do I could do that all day. I could just keep going on about different people, where you should go, you know, to get your, your car fixed. Murray's Auto Works. <laughs> He's my guy that I've gone to forever. I love to be a connector. I haven't done a video like this for a while because I got away from doing these long, like they just keep going. And I know some, some people will say, hey, if you can't say it in two minutes, I'm not listening. That's fine. That's fine. It's totally fine. Sometimes people will um, scroll through. I mean, the, the nice thing about these is after the live, you can fast forward it to go to the next part. Um, sometimes it's just a break for people to listen to something. And I'm here to just tell you, um, I don't want, I'm not ending the video yet, Brian, I have something to say about that. Um, I'm telling you, have a great weekend. Be safe. Remember what it's about. Um, we, we live in like the best place ever, the United States of America. Like I love my country. Um, it never used to be like where I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm not like the matchy matchy person, but hello, I'm, I've got my red, white, and blue, my shorts on, I've got my shirt, I've got my hat, I've got my flag in the background, I've got my sunglasses here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's the red, white, and blue, it's a flag. And I get this from my Aunt Maya, and she's been gone now quite a while. She'd be a hundred and, oh gosh. Anyway, um, it's funny how the things that people aren't necessarily teaching you when they're alive, but you're watching, you know, you're observing. And just remember that with our kids. They, if you have children, they observe what we're doing. Sometimes not necessarily what we're saying. Sometimes I'm like, could you please listen to me? But he's watching. My son, Luke, so he's watching. Hey, if you're looking to buy an exotic car or a classic car, Brian, I'm sorry, um, go see Brian Barr. And he's going to type in here. I hope you're still there. He's going to type in here where he's at. He's been at a new gig. Um, gosh, he sent me a photo of the showroom, and it is just gorgeous. Uh, Brian, can you type that in if you're still there? If not, I'll do it afterwards. Um, go check that out, buy a car from him. He's great. He, um, he is so personable and honest and has such a great character, great to work with. I know Brian personally, as a friend, we, we actually sing together sometimes. Don't get scared. Um, I won't sing right now, but, um, yeah, Brian and I have done some events together too with my cousin, Miles Nielsen. We need to do that soon, Brian, when all of this is, we can all get together. But that is awesome. He just said, I've been in this new gig for two weeks and three referrals. And, you know, that is that is what it's about. So please, I mean, this I wasn't going to be, be on here going, please remember what me when you go. But I will say it because if you know someone who's looking, whether it's you or a friend um, or family member, know somebody who's looking to buy or sell, please keep me in mind. Uh, if you feel comfortable referring me, a lot of times people know so many realtors that it's hard for them to refer because they don't want a friend to get upset. Um, keep in mind that, you know, so many, you probably know this, but so many personalities, personalities work with different people. 
some people want to work with a woman realtor. Some people want to work with a man realtor. Some people want to work with a married couple real realtor, the team. Um, I am with the LePage Johnson team. It's, um, I love this. I get to say LePage Johnson team, uh, EXP Realty. I'm a division of the LePage Johnson team, Laporta and Company. So I still have my branding. I'm still Laporta and Company, but I am on their team. I absolutely love being on their team. We all work so well together. It's like a family and we take care of our clients. It's beyond buying a house. It's beyond selling your house. It becomes a relationship and a friendship and we are there throughout the whole process to help you with so many things. Um, you know, I always joke with my clients and say when you move to town or before that actually, um, it's like, I'll have them set up with who a whole list of where they can go for to get their dog groomed, right? I mean, they're impeccable paws. <laughs> That's where I go in Catawba. Uh, so one thing that I want to put out here, well, I do, or I don't know whose attention I still have, is that a lot of people, so many people do not realize two things. Well, more than that, but two we're going to talk about in real estate. One is that I can do business in any state. And you might be going, well, what do you mean? How, how can you do that? So um, let me give you an example. You have a friend or you're watching this and you live in Scottsdale, Arizona, okay? You live in Lexington, Kentucky. You live where, wherever it is. Rockford, Illinois, my hometown. Yeah, yeah. Cheap trick, Miles Nielsen. Um, and you're getting ready to, you want to buy a house or sell. You can literally, if you don't already have somebody that would be expecting you to work with them or whatever, you can reach out to me and then I can refer you to someone because a lot of people don't even know people in their area. You might be moving to, you know, Jupiter, Florida, and you just don't even know who to reach out to. So you go on the internet and you go, okay, I'm going to look at their reviews and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I connect you with somebody who is right for your personality. I connect you with people that, and I'm getting to the point where I pretty much, I don't want to say have somebody every single place. That would be impossible. It'd be tough. But I have the connections of people in so many different states. Also now the UK, and I've got a couple in Canada. It's a big place, obviously, but I do have some people in Canada. And if I don't have somebody there, I will find that person. I will find that agent for you to work with. Um, I will connect you. You can have a conversation. If you're like, they're not for me, I'll be like, we'll move on to the next. But I pretty much can get a good feel after we've had a 15, 20 minute conversation on who you who would be good for you to work with. If not, you know, we move on and you might say, oh my gosh, this person is great. This is exactly who I wanted to work with. Now you go, well, how can I be involved in that? Me. Um, I still make money because I do a referral. Okay. So we get our commission and I do a percentage of that. And what I do and what works so well that most people don't think about is I am involved in that deal, not to the point where I'm like checking up on that agent, like going, okay, are you doing what you're supposed to do? It's not that, but they know that I'm there checking in and just saying, hey, how's it, how's it going with, you know, Joe and Sue? How is everything going? Um, did, how was the open house? I heard you were having an open house. They do know that there's somebody there who is, call it accountability in a good way, because and I've got this going on right now with an agent who had an issue with something. Okay, she's in another state. Um, got refer I referred one of my clients to her. And it's like we collaborate about something she has going on. And I'm not there. I'm not doing the open houses. I'm not putting the sign in the ground. I'm not doing that. But I am part of the deal because I brought the client to her. So it gives you an extra uh, layer. I, I look at it. I would love that. Peace of mind. Uh, when I moved here, oh my gosh, I've been going for 20 minutes. Amy Campos, if and when you watch this, don't give me a hard time. I'm giving out a lot of good information. Um, you know, when I moved to North Carolina, when Luke and I, my son and I moved to North Carolina almost 10 years ago, I was not licensed here yet. And I was going online, typing in a realtor, this, that, whatever, to just, and I wasn't even going to buy when I first got here, which I didn't. I rented. But first of all, to find somebody to even help me find a place to rent, because we don't make much. I'll, I'll just tell you. It's like on, you know, you, I, I think maybe it's like a, a, a 10% here. I don't do a lot of rentals. I will do them. I do do them when I'm working with a client 
who's like, hey, I'm going to move there and I'll probably buy and maybe they won't. I don't say no to people like that or I'll refer it if it's just a, it doesn't work for me at that time. But the thing is, in, you know, in other states, you can make up to as much as half the amount of the rent per month. So if I did a rental in Chicago and it was four grand, I would make two thousand dollars on that. OK, you've got to put your time, see where your time and money, what they're worth. So here, you know, I realized that when I moved here and, and people weren't going to make any money on me renting a house. And listen, I barely got any calls back. I bet I called five, six, six different agents, um, explained my story on their voicemail, even called a couple back a few times just to see, wow, was that an eye opener? Because you know what? They didn't know that I was going to be an agent here. I didn't even know that I was going to get my license again once I moved here. I thought I probably would, but I ended up buying a house just a couple years later. And uh, they could have had the business. So I'm just telling you, I am that agent that will help your people. Even if you say, well, I know these friends of mine, they're moving to Nashville and they're going to rent for the first six months or a year. People will say to me, they've said before, well, I didn't even think you'd want to mess around with it. Yes, I will. I'm their resource, okay? Because if I don't work now for three months down the road, six months down the road, a year down the road, and time goes fast, the older you get, I think it does. If I don't work like that now, I don't have money coming in. I take that back. I'm with a great company. Gosh, this was not going to go into this. But anyway, I'm with a great company called EXP. And I'll tell you something. I just saw the light in the biggest way, even though I've been with them now. I have to check. Two, two, two and a half, two and a half years? I don't know. Um, because every time we close a deal, we have the opportunity to buy stock at a discounted rate with a portion of our commission. So I just started saying, okay, I'd elect to do that, not paying attention. You know, it was a couple hundred here, 500 there, 600 there, 100, whatever. Um, oh my gosh. So our stock has gone from here to here. And my money, I looked at my account. In fact, Craig, I don't know if you spoke about that today in the meeting. Oh my goodness. I'm like, okay, this is, this is amazing. Any realtor who's not at least taking a look at that and talking to me about it, I don't care if you say no, I'm not here to pressure you. Shelly and Craig, the team that I'm on, LePage Johnson, they talked to me off and on. They didn't bug me about it. Why do I always do that? They didn't bug me about it, but um, we talked about it several different times. In fact, I went from Keller Williams back to over to uh, Wilkinson for, I always say a minute, it was maybe, I don't even know, six months, a year, I don't know. Um, and then I went back to Shelly and Craig and said, okay, I'm ready. And let me tell you, I don't know. Sometimes I say to Shelly or Craig or even Abby Mida, who's a dear friend of mine, I love you, Abby, um, that I'm like, why don't you grab me and say, listen, you just have to, you, you, if you just came on here, guys, I'm sorry. This is all about 4th of July and freedom and Ronald Reagan and this book and LePage Johnson and Laporta and company and hard work. And so go back to the beginning when it's over, if you want to watch it. Um, I can just be your goofy little entertainment here. But what I'm saying is, you know, I've said to Shelly before, like, why don't you just grab me or Abby? Why don't you just tell me you have to do it? You know why? Because that's not their personality. And even if they would have done that, I might have been like, whoa, I think that I would have been like, okay, I'll just slow down and take a look at it. I just go, 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 go. I love to work. I love to do creative things. I love to get into my projects in the garage. I'm always doing something, always. And so to me, moving to a new real estate company, I'm going to tell you how silly, how silly, silly, silly in my mind. I was like, well, shoot. I'm going to have to get, I'm trying to show you guys something. I'm going to have to get new cards. Okay. Really? Is it that hard to do? This is my Molly Laporta card. I am going to get these updated again now because even though I went to EXP, I'm sure it's backwards, Laporta and company. Now I am LePage Johnson, a division or Laporta and company, a division of LePage Johnson EXP Realty powered by and all that stuff. Really though, to get my cards redone, we have a client concierge at our office, Kelly Cruz, who's amazing, and she could just do my cards. It's not a big deal. But I let the over, things that felt like a burden and felt overwhelming, I just let them get in the way. I wish I would have made, would have made the decision a long time ago. So I don't know, you know, this video is, woo, all over the board. Kind of how I do things. I, I thought I had another prop I was going to show, but if you didn't see, 
all my stuff for Fourth of July. I'm like into it, okay? Um, and I've got the glasses here with the American flag. And then I've got my little bandana that I'll wear probably to work out later. And then I've got my red, white, and blue shorts. God bless you. Happy almost 4th of July. Um, I'm going to read my quote one more time. I read it at the beginning. Um, I'm not going to put my glasses back on here. Ronald Reagan, okay? Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. Ronald Reagan. Okay, people. And this book, I will post about it, The Art of Tom Heflin. Let me tell you, he is... He, he's amazing. Okay. He's a painter. These are painted. These are, these are not photographs. Like they're painted. He's absolutely incredible. I never realized like, cause I haven't taken the time to look through this whole book. I'm ashamed to say, um, but there is some, and, and my sweet Sarah, Oh, here it is. My sweet Sarah, who is one of my best friends in this entire world. Um, this is, that brings me tears when I say that. Sorry, guys. I just love her. This is uh, one that he did of, where are we? Right here. Okay. And I've got numerous stuff of hers around, but it's uh, Contemplation, 1981. Um, boy, let me think about that, Sarah. How old were we? You're just a few years older than me. How old were we in 1981? Um, well, I was in, in 1984, I was 13. Whoa, you were in some teenage years here. So it says, um, the, this huge willow tree stands near a little creek behind our home on Weldon Road. I used my, it's right here, sorry. I used my 16 year old daughter, Sarah, for a model. Anyway, I can't say enough about his art and, and maybe I shouldn't be saying all this. I don't know what's available or what's not available, what you can. And this is not all about being like a plug for Tom Heflin. It, it wasn't. I just, if you're at the beginning of this video, you go back and start over. It was about me thumbing through to see if I could see something that made me think of 4th of July. God bless everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching. If you did, I know it's long. Whoa, 30 minutes, 27 minutes. Uh, Brian, you never posted where to get the car, but I'll put it on here. Bye, everybody. God bless and love you.